Today my talk is going to be on approach to pleural effusion, how you are going to approach a case of a pleural effusion, how the patient present to you and how you are going to assess the patient and finally come to the diagnosis of causes of pleural effusion. And uh, in my next 45 minutes of my talk, I will be talking to you about the anatomy of the pleura and uh, recap about the normal uh, pleural fluid dynamics and to discuss about the common causes of pleural effusion, whether it is a transudative effusion causes and an exudative effusion causes. And I will be also touching about the how to take a history, what are the points you have to take in detail in the history and in clinical examination, how you are going to approach. And I am coming to the role of imaging in the diagnosis of pleural effusion and then I will be talking to you about the interpretation of the pleural fluid analysis, how we are going to come to the final diagnosis and what is the management. And uh, coming to my first part, introduction part of my slide, pleura and the lung are intimately associated and share a many pathological conditions. Why I said is, it is a mirror image, the pleural disease is a mirror image of a systemic disease. For example, I can say rheumatoid arthritis or an SLE, they can present with a pleural effusion or a pulmonary embolism, they can present with a pleural effusion. Out of this, 20% of these patients are undiagnosed pleural effusion, even if you have a, if you are going for a higher investigations like pleural biopsy or a uh, VATS guided or a thoracoscopy guided pleural biopsy, 20% 20, 20 of the patients are undiagnosed pleural effusion. Coming to the definition of pleural effusion, it is the accumulation of fluid within the pleural space due to the imbalance between the formation and uh, the absorption in a disease state. I will come to that in detail in the next part of my talk. Abnormal accumulation of fluid in the pleural sphere irrespective of the underlying causes is called as a pleural effusion. And coming, I will come to the what are the underlying causes in the later part of my talk. Coming to the anatomy of the pleura, you have two pleuras, it is developed from the coelomic epithelium and you have two types of pleura, one is a parietal pleura, another is a visceral pleura. And in between these two space is called as a pleural space and it where the pleural fluid is accumulated, it is called as a pleural effusion. If there is a air inside the pleural cavity, it is called as a pneumothorax. If it is a blood inside the pleural cavity, it is called as a hemothorax. If there is a chyle inside the pleural space, it is called as a chylothorax. If you have a urine inside the pleural space, it is called as a urinothorax. Coming to the pleural dynamics, I will tell you how the pleural fluid is formed. It is mainly between the parietal and visceral pleura and it is mainly because of the hydrostatic pressure and the oncotic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure favors the movement into the pleural space whereas the oncotic pressure is the opposite, opposition of the movement of the fluid is called as a oncotic pressure and the negative pressure as you know it is a minus 5 inside the pleural cavity and the systemic capillary pressure is the hydrostatic pressure that is plus 30 and the negative pleural pressure is minus 5 and the net pleural hydrostatic pressure is a 35 whereas here the net oncotic pressure is the systemic capillary oncotic pressure is 34 and the pleural fluid oncotic pressure is 5. So, the net will be 6. This is the opposing force and this is the oncotic pressure will be the oppo opposing movement whereas the positive uh, hydrostatic pressure will be the pushing of the fluid inside and this is called as uh, the net positive pressure is 6 in case of an oncotic pressure. Coming to the pleural fluid formation, as you all know, there is a two pleuras, as I told, is the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. And the visceral pleura, how it is secreted from the bronchial microvessels will release the pleural fluid formation, whereas the intercostal microvessels from the parietal pleura forms a pleural fluid. And the pleural fluid is absorbed by the lymphatics from the mediastinal nodes. If there is any blockage in the lymphatics or obstruction of the lymphatics will form, will prevent the absorption of the fluid. So, there will be an increasing in the pleural fluid formation. Coming, I will come to that in the separate mechanism of what are the diseases that causes. Coming to the normal pleural physiology and the total pleural fluid volume is 0.2 to 0.3 ml per kg body weight. 